Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to show you how to do a network migration on a host that's running the vCenter server virtual machine from a standard vSwitch to a distributed vSwitch. Now typically the issue around doing this is if you try to move the network adapter and the vCenter server virtual machine NIC at the same time, it causes a problem, it, it usually ends up failing, and it's really just caused by the fact that you're trying to move the physical networking on a host that's running your vCenter virtual machine. And I'll assume there's some reason you need to do this. Perhaps uh, you're migrating to a distributed switch, it's a, it's a new environment, or you are just finally taking the plunge and saying, oh, I want to go distributed switch for my management. Either way, you're stuck in some sort of pickle and you need to do this migration. So I'm going to make the assumption that you've already made your distributed switch, it's already configured, but empty, and you need to move the bits over to it from this host. So we're going to focus on this host ESX1, and in front of you I have vSwitch0, not too much fanciness to it. It's running a vCenter server appliance running on version 5.5, and it has a management VM kernel port, VM kernel 0. That's it. And two uplinks. And there's a production LAN here. It's a distributed switch. has a, a warning on it because there are no uplinks, and this is where we want to move everything to. In fact, if I scroll down a little bit, we want to move the VM kernel port to this management port group, and we want to move the vCenter server appliance to this vCenter server port group. So that's the goal. Let's begin with step one. We're actually going to look at vSwitch 0 here. And it has two uplinks. They're set up in a team. They're redundant. So it really doesn't matter if I steal one to do this move or not. So in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do by selecting vSwitch 0, clicking on this little green thing with the wrench to manage the network adapters. I'm just going to steal this second NIC on the list right here, this VM NIC 1. I'm going to go ahead and click the red X on that to get rid of it. Click OK. And that's it for step one. We've removed a NIC from the standard vSwitch. So now that NIC is removed, let's go ahead and execute step two, which is we're going to add the network adapter to the distributed switch. So I'm going to click on this production LAN guy right here. I'm going to click on the same kind of card with the wrench icon to manage the adapters. Click the plus sign to add an adapter. And there's only one choice. It's the one that I removed from before. So I'm going to click on OK. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to change the uplink to uplink 2, because this is really the second uplink on that server, and click OK. I just I like things to be in order. So there we go. It's in the uplink 2 position. Click OK. And it's going to go ahead and add that adapter to the distributed switch. That's all there really is with step 2. And what we've done is there are now working adapters on both the standard switch and the distributed switch. So we now have functional switches on both sides. Now we can move all the bits over to the distributed switch off of the standard switch. That's the third step. So for step three, I'm going to click on this little networking globe doodad right there and make sure that I've highlighted the distributed switch that I'm trying to migrate to. I'm going to go to the actions. I'm going to manage the hosts. And in this case, I want to manage the host networking. Click next there. And I'm going to select the host that I'm working on here, this ESX1. It'll change depending on what you're working on. Click next again. And we're going to not migrate an adapter yet. We're going to keep the adapters the way they are. We're going to move the VM kernel port for management, and we're going to migrate the virtual machine networking for our vCenter server appliance. And you could also have the Windows server for vCenter. It doesn't really matter. I'm just specifying that I'm using the appliance. So first off, the management VM kernel port. It's actually the only thing on vSwitch 0. Everything else is on the distributed port, uh, port group already. So I'm going to click on Assign Port Group. For that VMK0 for management, I'm going to give it the management port group. Makes kind of sense, right? Click OK. Go next. Now, there's no iSCSI that I have to worry about. This isn't impacting any storage in any way, so I'll just skip past the analyze impact. Now, I'm going to go ahead and migrate the networking for the vCenter server virtual machine. Click assign port group, and then find the port group applicable for it. In my case, it's magically the vCenter server port group. It'll probably be something different for you. Click OK. Next and then finish. You don't have to have a dedicated port group for vCenter. It just made it easy to show it off that way. So at this point, it's actually moving over the VM kernel port for management and the vCenter server's virtual machines networking is being moved over to the distributed switch. And it's actually all done. It's moved all those components over. And this is that point where we're going to make sure everything's operational. I didn't get kicked out of the web client. All the tasks completed successfully over here. That looks great. And in fact, if I go to related objects on the production distributed switch, I can now see that we have virtual machines here. There should be 
the virtual machine listed, and it is, so that's good. So now everything moved over. It was successful in that move. Now we can go rip out that remaining network adapter off the standard switch and give it to our distributed switch. So for that, I'm going to go back to the host, just to show you kind of different ways to do things. And we'll execute that fourth step by ripping out the remaining network adapter and giving it to the distributed switch. Okay, so you see that I have the production LAN selected here. Let's switch over to the standard switch, which is what we want to steal from. And I'm just going to do it kind of the classic way here. We're going to click on this little green card button here with the wrench and click on X there. And that would get rid of it. That's one way you can do it. I'm just going to show you another way real quick. And if I did that, we just click OK, and then I can go grab the adapter. But I already showed you that. So what we're going to do is this other option right here. Uh, if I click on production LAN, then I can click on this little double blue card with the arrow, and that says migrate physical or virtual network adapters. So oh, that's kind of handy, right? It's kind of a new thing with the web client. So if I click on that, I can say all I want to do is manage the physical adapters. Click Next. And it's going to tell me that this one is in use with vSwitch 0. I want to take it, so I'm going to assign it the uplink of uplink 1. It's the only one actually left over. Click OK. And there we go. Now I'm moving it from a standard switch into the distributed switch. Click Next. And again, there's no iSCSI impact. We're not messing with any iSCSI storage. And click Finish. And now we've stolen in one step. We've taken away that final adapter from the standard switch and given it to the distributed switch. So there we go. It's a few steps, uh, four in total, required to get everything off of a standard switch safely. This is something you could very easily do during production. And if there were more virtual machines other than just the vCenter virtual machine, you could move those over in a very similar fashion. If there was a problem, they would just roll back to the standard switch potentially, or the change wouldn't execute. And there would still be a working uplink on the standard switch that they could consume while you go and find out the problem. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.